guys, it's time for Story Hour again. Thank you guys for joining us today. Today is a special day because we're getting ready for a holiday next week, or this weekend I should say. And on that week that holiday, we talk about a special animal. Today is a special day. An animal that will go hop. Oh. Hi there, bunny. Are you coming to see the story time today? Say hi to everyone. This is the bunny. Uh, if you want to go ahead and sign in your names, um, I'm actually not seeing them on there, so if you want to... Uh... Oh, hi, Ellie and Colt. Hi. The bunny says hi to Ellie and Colt. Because so I'll go ahead and uh, send in if you want to say hello and let us know that you're there. Also, a reminder, please just give us a little like down there, too, so it helps us keep track of our videos and who's watching and who's with us. Uh, but today we are going to talk about bunny rabbits. There you go, I can see now. Uh, our bunny rabbits uh, have long ears, and they like to hop. And this one, he's coming out to say hi to these little shy sometimes. It's okay, bunny, say hello. But, uh, so the bunny rabbit is here, and we're going to talk about rabbits. And uh, hi, uh, hi, Everly. Hi, Everett. Oh, the bunny's waving at all the friends that come to see me today. Hi, Everly. Hi, Everett, he says. Um, okay, you just lost me again there. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so the bunny is going to... I'm going to let him... Hey, bunny, can you sit down on the floor and listen to the story a little bit while I, I share a story? And you can come back and talk to us at the end? Okay, say so bye-bye for now. Okay. So, um, uh, who else? Okay, hi, Lydia. Hi, and her Nana. Hi, Nana. And uh, every day. So we're going to share a story today because next this Sunday is Easter. And on Easter, we have stories about bunny rabbits and eggs and all the fun things that come along with that. And there's a very special bunny that we talk about on Easter, and that is the Easter Bunny. That's right. So the story I want to share with you is called Easter Bunny's Amazing Egg Machine. And this story, it gets a little crazy for the Easter Bunny. Easter Bunny was in bed with a bag case of the flu in his workshop. Eggs were waiting to be colored, but all Easter Bunny could do was sniffle and sneeze and say, Oh, my head. Oh, my stomach. To cheer him up, his friends brought him carrot soup. They made him get well soon, Easter Bunny cards. After a while, Easter Bunny began to feel a little better. I must get to work, he exclaimed and started coloring eggs as fast as he could. Let us help, suggested the mole twins. Thank you, said the Easter Bunny, but I could do it <laughs> myself. For days and days, Easter Bunny colored eggs. At last, it was just one day before Easter. Oh dear, said the Easter Bunny, these eggs will never be ready in time. He had to speed things up. But how? Suddenly, an amazing idea popped into the Easter Bunny's head. An idea full of thigamajigs and whatchamacallits. He drew a picture of it, then he hopped around the house, gathering together building materials. And after a lot of clinking and clanging and rattling and banging, there it was! An Easter egg machine. This machine will make Easter eggs faster than the Easter Bunny himself, chuckled the Easter Bunny. Easter Bunny wanted to try it out right away, so he took a plain white egg and he placed it on the belt and then he pushed the green button. The machine began to whirl and to buzz. Then the egg disappeared into the machine. Easter Bunny raced around to the other side and boop! The plain white egg had become bright orange. A perfect Easter egg! I'll be done with my eggs in no time, said the Easter Bunny. He began feeding the eggs into the machine. Zip, zip, zip. And as soon as he put them in, out they came the other end. Boop, boop, boop. Blue eggs and pink eggs, yellow eggs and purple eggs, striped eggs and dotted eggs. Eggs with zigzag designs, eggs with flowers all around. There were even eggs with cute little bunnies on them. Easter Bunny hopped back and forth, filling the baskets with pretty Easter eggs. The egg machine worked beautifully, even better than he had imagined. So Easter Bunny began to put the eggs in faster. Zip, 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 and out they came just as fast. Boop, 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 until... Clunk. 
What was that? said the Easter Bunny. He stopped in his tracks to listen. Clonk, 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 clonk. All of a sudden, the machine speeded up. Strange looking eggs started popping out. Eggs with whiskers, eggs with tails. Eggs that looked like baseballs and soccer balls. Even square eggs, eggs with wings, and even scrambled eggs. Before Easter Bunny could pull the plug, eggs were flying everywhere. They hit the ceiling, the walls, the floor. They hit the windows and the doors and the furniture. And one uncooked egg landed right on the Easter Bunny's head. <laughs> Splat. Several eggs flew into the fireplace, up the chimney, and out into the moonlit garden. Outside, Easter Bunny's animal friends watched in amazement. What could be going on in the Easter Bunny's workshop? They opened the door, and there was Easter Bunny wiping his face. Ugh, this is terrible, cried Easter Bunny. Easter will be here in just a few hours, and I don't have enough, nearly enough eggs to hide for the children. Then what are we waiting for, said the mole twins. The chipmunks and moles cleaned up the mess. The hens laid egg, the birds collared and decorated them. Just before the sun rose on Easter morning, Easter Bunny hid the Easter eggs one by one under the rose bush, by the garden gate, behind some rocks, until there were only a few eggs left in his basket. Easter Bunny knew just what he was going to do with those extra eggs. I'll take these home, he said, for my extra special friends. Easter Bunny's Amazing Egg Machine by Wendy, Wendy Chayette Lewison. So this is a fun story that's at the library, and you can come check out some books at the library too uh, for Easter. We have lots of Easter books for you to check out in all three branches. But I want to tell you about a special day that I had last week. Last week I went to visit our friends at Fairview Public Library, and we had someone come to down to talk to us. Someone that is from some, an organization that is called On Eagle's Wings Therapeutic Horsemanship, her name is Casey Conaway, and we're going to talk about bunnies. So I'll see you in a little bit as we watch this video. Hi, I'm so excited you could join us today. I am joined by a very special guest. Her name is Casey Conaway, and she's with a very special program called Eagle Wings Therapeutic Horsemanship. But they don't only have horses, they have bunny rabbits. Hi, thanks for joining us today. Hi, my pleasure. So can you tell us a little bit about these rabbits? Sure, these rabbits live and work with us at On Eagle's Wings Therapeutic Horsemanship Center. Now, we primarily focus in, on horses, but we also have three rabbits and a whole bunch of chickens. So the, this is Hop and this is Hip, okay. named appropriately, Hip and Hop. I think we're trading. Okay, and you were telling me that these rabbits are uh, special kind of rabbits. Is their long hair? Yes, I want to highlight that these are lion head rabbits because the way their hair grows around their face. Uh, this breed of rabbit, a lion head rabbit, originated in Belgium, so they were popular in Europe okay. before they came to the States. And as you notice, as we're petting Hip and Hop, their hair is longer but not as dense. Mm. Something else you may notice. Uh, Lionhead rabbits have shorter ears than other breeds of rabbits. Um, a lionhead rabbit's ears only grow to be between two and three inches. Oh. So that is very different from a lot of the domesticated rabbits you'll see around. Yes. Can you tell me how you got started with rabbits? Yeah. When I was a little girl, I was given a rabbit as a gift and I had to have a long talk with my mom and dad about how to care for that rabbit. And I grew up in Fairview, and my mom sent me to the Fairview Public Library to check out a book to learn proper care and handling, safe handling of rabbits. So that's how I got started. So you can come to your public library if you would like to learn about rabbits or guinea pigs or goldfish or anything like that. They will have books as well as other reference things that you can find out how to take care of a pet. That's interesting that you would mention guinea pigs because if introduced early on when they're little, a rabbit and a guinea pig can live in the same cage. And they pretty much eat the same type of food, right? Absolutely. 
It's really important to note that rabbits are very special pets, um, but they may not fit into every family. Uh, rabbits like these lionhead rabbits only uh, grow to weigh between two and three pounds, so it's important that they have gentle care. Uh, rabbits like to be picked up with one hand under the chest and one hand under their bottom. They like to be supported and they like to be held close to your body. They like to feel safe close to their body. And it's also really important that um, rabbits be given uh, regular, um, obviously food and water every day, offered clean water. These rabbits eat hay and rabbit pellets every day. And then it's important to keep up with the chores. Um, the hutch or the shelter, wherever the rabbits are living, it's important that that be clean daily. So uh, it's like having a regular, any kind of pet, you're going to have to take big responsibility. You have to make sure that you care for it by feeding and water, as well as keeping its cage clean. And um, is there anything else important to do? Um, I think it's important to note that rabbits enjoy the companionship of humans. Um, they like to feel a human heartbeat. They like to make that connection. But like I said earlier, it's just necessary that all the care be done gently. So they, they're very loving pets and they, they need the love and attention. Yes. All these bunnies live. Rabbits that are well cared for um, can live uh, usually around eight years. However, uh, the life expectancy for a lion head is a little longer. They can live up to 10 years. Uh, these rabbits are about a year and a half old. And do you take these uh, bunnies to like the vet as well or to a doctor? Yes, these uh, bunnies, if they're sick, they get care, they get regular checkups. Um, so yeah, they're very similar in that way in terms of veterinary care. They're similar to a dog or a cat. Uh, is there anything unique that you can train a rabbit to do? Yeah, similar to dogs and cats, rabbits can be potty trained. Um, they can learn to use a, something like a litter box. Hmm. So they do make, for the right family, they do make um, a nice indoor house pet. We do have to be careful that they don't chew the wrong thing, like a, an electrical cord. Oh, that's really bad. So there's always um, safety concerns. So a uh, rabbit does make for a great pet for certain people, but it is a big responsibility and you have to be able to prepare to take care of that rabbit because it will live, I'm oh, sorry, was that eight years? Something? Eight to ten years. That's so a long time to you have know, a friend. If, if, you're in, if you're in the second grade, you could be graduating high school and your rabbit still be with you. And that would be exciting. <laughs> So this time of year, people tend to buy bunnies for Easter. Uh, can you tell us some of the, the good and the bad things about that? Um, well, rabbits make really good companions for humans, so that's one of the good things. Um, one of the challenges might be um, in the responsibility that's necessary to take care of a rabbit. It is a commitment, and that's like a promise that you keep every day. Um, so when, if, if somebody gets a rabbit as an Easter gift or there's a rabbit in your Easter basket, it would be really important to know um, that that rabbit has to be thought of, checked on, and fed every single day. And that includes feeding and cleaning up after it and loving it, giving it time and paying attention to it. Yeah, and even... Um, giving it an opportunity to be outside of its house to exercise. That's a good point. Uh, bunnies, like most animals, will need to get out and do some exercise. Absolutely. So, because they'll spend most of their time in a cage, but they right. need to get out so they can get some exercise I as mean, well. We call them hip and hop for a reason. There you go, because bunnies do hop. I don't know if we can, our friend will do anything for us there, but uh, they're pretty calm and relaxed here. They're chill bunnies. And they're calm and relaxed because and on Eagle's Wings, we got hip and hop when they were very young. Okay. And we practiced holding them close to us, so they're very comfortable being held. Very good. So tell me a little bit about the care and grooming of a pet rabbit. 
Well, our rabbits, um, we don't give them a bath, but what we do it, uh, do is we brush the dirt out of their out of their coat, just gently with a safe pet brush. Um, and you'll notice there's some hair flying through the air. I, I do. That's because this is spring. And so all winter long, our rabbits grew in this really warm, protective winter coat. But now that the weather's changing, they're ready to lose some of that hair that they don't need for summer. So they grow in a thicker fur for the winter to protect them with the cold. And then in the spring, they shed off that hair. Yes. One of the things I should tell you is if you do have a rabbit and you keep it in a cage, um, they may not walk on a surface enough that will keep their nails trimmed. So there is some information available on how to safely trim a rabbit's nails. That may be something that you might want to get mom and dad's help with is to help cut the toenails of your pet. Absolutely. Can you tell me a little bit about uh, your organization of Eagle's Wings? Sure. On Eagle's Wings, we're a nonprofit organization. We're located between, um, just outside of Fairmont, uh, between Fairmont and Morgantown, and we exist to provide safe opportunities for individuals with disabilities to participate in equine-assisted activities and therapies. And equine is a very big word for these horses. Yes, yes. So while our primary focus is to work with horses, um, we do um, provide outreach into the community for literacy and care and compassion. And that's really where hip and hop come into the picture. Is there anything special you can do with the rabbits? Yeah, um, we actually have volunteers at On Eagle's Wings who come every week and read to the rabbits so that um, our rabbits uh, are used to human interaction and then they're, they become really good companions um, to children and adults for reading. They let you know, big ears, yes, they, they like, like to listen good, to stories. Good listeners. Are, is there any particular books that the rabbits like? Hip and Hop, one of their favorites is a book called The Velveteen Rabbit. That's a good one. Just tell me something unique about the rabbits. Um, these rabbits actually live in a place called a tack room. So let me tell you what a tack room is. Because we're a horsemanship center, they live in the room where we keep all of our saddles and horseback riding equipment. So horseback riding equipment is called tack. It's called tack. Huh. So uh, when rabbits have babies, do they have a special name? They do. And it may sound tricky at first. You may think we're talking about cats, but we're actually talking about rabbits. Baby rabbits are called kittens. Now you'll notice, Christian, that um, Hop's nose is twitching, and that is the sign of a curious and playful rabbit. So I think that means they're pretty happy here at the library. Oh, I see. You could twitch these little noses twitching. Can you guys see that there? He's a happy little filler. So tell me a little bit about how rabbits are useful with your organization. Sure, and on Eagle's Wings, we are a safe place for individuals with disabilities. Um, sometimes the uh, friends that we work with have a sensory disorder, and so our rabbits are very helpful just because they can provide the sensory stimulation of something soft. Oh, and they are very soft. Very soft, and the long hair can provide sensory stimulation. So, uh, Casey, is there anything you would like to tell us about uh, your organization or the bunnies before we wrap up here? Sure. Um, Hip and Hop live with us at On Eagle's Wings, and folks are welcome to contact us. You can visit our website, um, give us a call if you want to come meet Hip and Hop, or take a tour of our Therapeutic Horsemanship Center and meet our horses. That sounds awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate this. And, uh, we want to thank you for coming to join us today with these cute little fellows to say Happy Easter. Thank you. Happy Easter. Hi, 
Wasn't that fun to see those live bunnies? I had a great time with those and I hope you did too. So thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we'll see you next week. But until then, as always, thank you for being good listeners. And thank you for letting me share that story with you and this little bunny. And, oh, yes, I want to say hello to some of my friends that I missed. Ha, ha, thank you, Chris, for coming to see us. Chris and Scotty and Lucy, Ella, Katie, Darren, and Josie. Thank you, guys. Thank everyone so much for coming to join us today for these story times. We really appreciate that you coming to see us. Make sure you give us, again, a little like down there so that we uh, can show that people are watching the videos. Um, but until then, again, thank you so much for being good listeners. Thank you so much for letting me share that wonderful story with you. And... Thank you for letting me spend this time with you today. Have a great day and have a happy Easter.